good morning, good afternoon, good evening, good evening, everyone. So we, we have reached a quorum, so we will start our today's presentation. Um, very pleased to be here to share with you on the Common Shark project and what makes it an innovative and successful story pushing the boundaries of LNGSU. Before we dive into our presentation, we would love to hear from you. So we have arranged 25 minutes for a Q&A and a poll session in the second part of the webinar. There is a dedicated chat for Q&A, so do not hesitate to write down your questions at any time, and we will answer them during the second part. For your information, the webinar is being recorded and the recording will be available on demand. For those of you just joining us, uh, welcome. And we are now moving to the presentation of uh, today's panelists. So my name is Jonathan Vischer. I am product line developer in charge of LNG fuel ships in GDT. And to talk about this success, I have with me Sébastien Louis from Ponant and Julien Boulan from Bureau Veritas. For the next 20 minutes, we will tell you a story. A story about the successful application of increased maximum pressure in the common shark of fuel tanks. Share some feedbacks on the, the alternative design process and show how all this work could be applied to other ships, such as container vessels uh, for one baggage, one baggage maximum pressure, for example. Sebastian, could you remind us the genesis of the Commander Charco and share with us why Ponant has chosen LNG as fuel for their new flagship? Yes, of course. Um, thank you, Jonathan, for your introduction. And uh, good morning and good afternoon, everyone. Uh, so I am Sebastian Luis. I'm representing uh, Ponon Company. I'm very pleased to be with you today uh, with my colleague from uh, GTT and Bureau Veritas uh, to present this project. Uh, so firstly, I'm going to tell you a little bit about uh, how this story uh, began. So as you may know, uh, Ponant is a ship owner and operator of luxury cruise ships with a specialization in polar expedition cruises. Uh, back in 2015, we had this kind of uh, crazy idea uh, to build a passenger vessel able to explore the poles and the most remote areas in the southern and northern region of the world. As you can see uh, on the slide, uh, the pass that was intended for the, for the vessel. So uh, as you can understand, for this project, one of the top priority was to integrate uh, the latest innovations available in order to minimize uh, our environmental impact uh, in relation to uh, greenhouse gases, uh, local pollutants, uh, waste management, and so on. Uh, so after uh, some studies and research, uh, Ponon finally selected a hybrid propulsion system powered by LNG. Uh, indeed, uh, at the time, LNG was the only available solution able to reduce our carbon footprint and also drastically cut uh, SOX, NOx, and particulate emissions. So once Ponant uh, made this decision to use LNG as a fuel, uh, our next challenge was to find a way to store this fuel and make the most efficient use uh, of LNG. But we had also to keep in mind uh, that the vessel needed to operate safely and with complete autonomy in extreme ice conditions uh, during cruises and that could last up to three to four weeks. So if I try to, to summarize, uh, we wanted to store as much as possible of LNG. We wanted to be uh, as flexible as possible. And we did not want to make any compromise uh, about the safety, especially for a passenger vessel. So that's basically with this idea and project in mind that we approached uh, GTT in 2017. Uh, Jonathan, could you tell us what solution GTT proposed to Ponon for this project? Yeah, sure. Thanks, Sebastian. Indeed, by applying Mark III containment system, we were able to improve significantly the cruising range of the ship. So here, we can see what really made the difference. On this graph, you can see the initial ship arrangement that included two bailed-up type C tanks. Due to the standard shape, they could hardly store 3,000 cubics of LNG. And on the bottom part, 
is the arrangement with the Mach 3 um, membrane tanks. Thanks to Mach 3 mod modularity, the energy tanks can store 4,500 cubics and save one deck that you can see in green on, the, on this graph. So several hundreds of a square meter saved on top of that. By, de by definition, atmospheric tanks uh, such as membrane um, have a, an operating pressure close to the atmosphere. And the maximum pressure is limited to 700 millibar gauge. In order to respond to Bonan request for flexibility, we in GTT studied the possibility to increase the maximum pressure up to two bar G while keeping the same Mark III containment system. This would bring uh, several significant advantages, and the first one being the most uh, direct one, uh, the longer holding time. So in case of small consumption or without any consumption, the duration between before reaching maximum pressure is more than doubled compared to um, the 0.7 bar G that you can see on the on, the, on this graph. Um, this induces additional peace of mind for the operators, especially the ones that are uh, newcomers in LNG. And this also reduces the risk of wasting bottle of gas. Uh, secondly, this can lead to uh, shorter operations, uh, especially in case of the initial cooling down of, of the LNG tank. And last but not least, the ability to bunker warmer LNG, which was particularly interesting in Ponon case because of the remote area of operations and with a very long supply chain. But setting membrane tank design pressure above 0.7 bar G goes beyond the limit dictated by the IGF code. So Julien, as a class representative, would you have any idea how to address this? Hello. Uh, hi, good morning, good afternoon. So my name is Julien Boulan. I represent Bureau Veritas. We worked as a classification society for this project. So we'll share with you from a regulatory perspective how innovative this project is. So the Commandant Charcot is an LNG fuel vessel and as such, we'll have to comply with the requirements of the IGF code that you see here on the slide. So it's the code for ships using gas as a fuel and other low flash point fuel. And we'll have also to comply with class rules in that respect, our BV rules for gas fuel ship. Uh, so regarding the fuel tank pressure in the case of membrane technology, the IGF code mandates a maximum design pressure of 0.7 bar G. So however, for the project, the team came up with the proposal of an increased pressure up to 2 bar G. So in order to go beyond this, the requirement of the code, the regulation provides a mechanism that is called alternative design approach that enable to assess a new design through a detailed methodology. And if it is proven satisfactory by the flood administration, this design will eventually get approval. So the governing principle of alternative design is to demonstrate that the new design has an equivalent level of safety compared to the initial design. Um, so on this slide, we have the, the process. So from a, a regulatory perspective, we cannot emphasize how more this project is an achievement and a first. It's the first time the tech, this technological feature, which is increased to two bar G, was granted approval by the flag administration on this type of vessel. So at this juncture, I would like to highlight there is the three main entities involved in the project. So we have the project team that includes the alternative design team. We have the class and we have the flag. Uh, for this project, it was the French flag. Uh, from a class perspective, our experts at BV were involved during the whole process in the discipline of safety, hull, fuel containment system, and in particular participating to the workshops and meetings with the flag administration experts. So alternative design process, it goes like this in four phases. So it will start with the preparation phase, which is to define the action plan, define and characterize the new design. You name the alternative design team members, you identify the risk and draw the risk plan, and you define the analysis to be carried out, and you define the basis for approval and the overall safety goals. That's number one. Uh, by the way, the uh, alternative design is defined in two uh, IMO circular 1455 and 1212. 
Um, then phase two of the alternative design will include, sorry, a detailed scoping of the analysis to be carried out and a detailed scoping of the regulatory framework. Uh, in this phase, the risk assessment will be carried out first with a hazard and then the qualitative risk assessment. So I would like also to highlight in the scope of this project, we have produced an academic paper that gives full detail about what was done uh, and you can get a copy after the webinar on request. Uh, then we have phase three of the alternative design. Uh, this is where the analysis are carried out. For, for this project, it encompasses 20 uh, studies ranging from structural analysis to process analysis to searching analysis. And eventually we have phase four, a flag will grant final approval. Obviously, there, the, the, the flag is not solicited at the end of the project. There is intermediate approvals uh, throughout the process between phase one, two and three. And now I pass back the floor to uh, Sébastien Luis from Ponant, who will share more on the, on the project. Thank you, Julien. So uh, here we are. Uh, so Le Commandant Charcot Vessel was delivered last year in July 2021. And it took uh, basically six years to bring this ship from concept to reality. Uh, last year as well, one major milestone was also reached because on September 6, 2021, uh, le commandant Charcot reached for the first time the North Pole running on LNG, uh, being the first French ship to reach this point. So on the slides, uh, you can see some of the main characteristics of the vessel. So the, the, the ship has been built by the Norwegian shipyard Vard, which is part of uh, the Fink and Thierry group. Uh, the ship is uh, 150 meters long. Uh, it is a polar class two vessel. That means it can uh, navigate in 2.5 meter ice thickness at two knots. Uh, the vessel can accommodate uh, 270 passengers and 190 crew members. During the, the cruises, uh, the, the vessel is also embarking scientists and researchers on board in order to perform uh, measurement campaigns in relation to the study of ice, water, and biodiversity in these uh, really extreme regions where there is often no data available. If we zoom on uh, the LNG system, so the, the vessel is a uh, dual fuel and it is equipped with six Varsila 31DF engines that generate 42 megawatts of power. Regarding the LNG storage, uh, so two uh, GTT Mark III LNG tanks are installed uh, for a total capacity of 4,500 cubic. And this capacity ensure uh, four weeks autonomy running on LNG. On the screen, uh, you can see also uh, some picture of the LNG tanks. So on, on the left, uh, you can see where they are located. So they are located aft of the, of the vessel uh, below the waterline. And on the middle, uh, you can see the interior of the aft tank with this uh, uh, chamfer. Uh, so uh, this chamfer has been designed to follow the shape of the hull and optimize the, the, the space. And finally, on the right, uh, you can see one of the domes that is located above the LNG uh, tanks. So what you can notice here is that uh, these domes have a kind of a bell shape, uh, which is unusual for membrane tanks. And that is because they have been designed by type C, as type C dome uh, in order to withstand the increased pressure. So this is one of the key uh, technological bricks that have been developed during this uh, alternative design. Uh, so now I uh, wanted also to, to, to share with you some operational feedback and illustrate how this uh, design, so this two bar gauge um, design can bring flexibility in real life. So here on the slide, you have uh, the result of three bunkering operations that have been performed on the Commander Charcot vessel. So in, the, in the table um, and on the graph, uh, you can see, uh, first of all, for bunkering two and three, uh, that they were very uh, similar. In these uh, cases, uh, boil of gas was managed uh, by consuming gas into Le Commandant Charcot vessel. And you can see on, on the graph that the pressure uh, stayed under the usual range for membrane tanks. 
Uh, and now, if we look at the bunkering number one, uh, this one was quite different. Indeed, uh, in that case, the LNG tanks needed to be partially cooled down before the bunkering operation could take place. And as a result, uh, a lot more uh, boil of gas was generated during the bunkering operation. Uh, in order to manage uh, that, we had to return vapor to the bunker vessel, consume uh, gas on board the Commandant Charcot, and letting the pressure rise in the tanks up to uh, 0.8 bar gauge. So this uh, last case is really a, a practical example of how this two bar gauge design can add flexibility during the operations of the vessel. Uh, finally, uh, I would like to share with you uh, some lessons learned uh, regarding the alternative design process itself. So the, the first thing you have to be aware of is that this is a process that takes time. Uh, for us, uh, for Ponon, it began in early uh, 2018 when we start looking into this uh, two bar gauche design with GTT, uh, BV, and VARD. As a ship owner, uh, you need to be deeply involved every step of the way. You need strong partners uh, that have reference in the industry. And last point, uh, very also important, is uh, um, strong cooperation between all stakeholders, uh, be because you can see uh, on the slides that a lot of uh, parties are involved. Uh, so we have the ship owner, of course, but also uh, the shipyard that design and build the hull that will support the membrane. Uh, the tank designer, so GTT, that make all the studies and prepare the containment system specific documents. And the class that will review all the technical elements. And finally, the flag that will give the final approval. Uh, in our case, during this process, we were also supported by the engineering company BV Solutions that was tasked to facilitate uh, the various risk analysis workshops and also build the technical package for class and flag review. But the important message here after all this process is that uh, this project was the first and we made it. And I have no doubt that the path is paved for future similar projects. Uh, so now we we'll give back the floor to Jonathan, but I think we we'll give you some insights about a timeline needed for a project like that, and explain also how this work could be used for other type of applications. Thank you, Sebastian. So if we have a look at the typical project schedule, as uh, this one, we see that the alternative design process can be run and, and shall be run in parallel of the project schedule. We can find the main part of the process that uh, Julien presented before. So the preparation part, qualitative analysis, quantitative, and uh, final approval. Um, the qualitative analysis begin at a ship building uh, contract with the ACID, um, and uh, with the aim to have the quantitative analysis uh, and all the technical reports reviewed by class and by flag uh, during ship construction and ideally uh, close to the beginning in order to reduce the risks. Taking advantage of all the work performed for the Commander Charcot, GTT is now able to offer a design with intermediate increase pressure of one bar G. This is a good compromise as the two bar G design cannot be applied for large tanks for LNG fuel ships, um, especially because of the limitation on tank height. So with the one bar G uh, maximum pressure, the, the impact remain uh, on the impact on the vessel design and on the tank design remain quite limited. Only some reinforcement on the dome structure and the uh, surrounding the tank. Uh, and this can be applied to any uh, ship type, from container vessel to uh, bulkers, tankers, or even uh, LNG bunker vessel. And this have been um, approved in principle by BV uh, end of uh, last year, 2021. So to summarize, uh, on behalf of all project stakeholders, I can say that we are 
very proud of this success uh, for, for this project and that it led to this beautiful ship. The increased pressure improves our operational flexibility and eases our LNG supply. Moreover, the alternative design is now validated in real life with all system tested on the field and working properly. As uh, Sebastian said, the experience, experience gained with the Commander Charcot paved the way for the next alternative design applications for increased pressure. And we can be confident that the next applications will go smoothly. All the technological developments uh, and studies have been made for cotton and system and, and the systems surrounding it. Uh, so solutions are ready for, for one bargy and two bargy, depending on chip type. And uh, yeah, one last point, uh, as Julien said, we, we have published a complete paper on, on this subject so that we can share on demand. So we have now uh, reached the, the end of, our, uh, of the first part of our presentation. So we will um, now start the, um, the poll. Um, Cannot see it. Um, no, maybe we have an issue for launching the poll. Sorry for that. Um, in the meantime, um, I would like to. Uh, so before we go to the Q and A session, um, if you enjoyed this webinar and would like to learn more about our other solutions, please register and uh, join us for the next uh, webinars that we will uh, we'll be having. And um, GTT will host another webinar in two weeks regarding boil of gas management. It is entitled, How to Improve Vessel Energy Efficiency on Boil of Gas Management, where you will have the chance to appreciate uh, GTT key references on LNG as fuel, uh, but also uh, our return of experience about fuel gas system as well as uh, innovative boil of gas management product, which is called Recycle, and which is dedicated to improve the operations um, and minimize the vessel carbon, carbon uh, footprint. Um, so, yeah. No, um, I think, um, yeah, still not able to launch the ball. So we, we will uh, go directly to the Q&A session. And I think we have already some of them. And do, do not hesitate to um, ask any questions that you have on, on the, on the Q&A button. OK, so um, yeah, I will do the question. So we have uh, questions coming up. Uh, thank you very much. So don't hesitate to ask the question. So uh, a lot of topics. Uh, are covered in this question. So I have one question. What is the purpose to have two LNG tanks? Is it for redundancy or other consideration? Um, maybe it's for Sebastian. Yes, uh, thank you for the questions. Uh, yes, exactly. The, the, the purpose of having two LNG tanks is for redundancy only. Uh, in this way, we have two uh, TCS, two uh, fuel supply system. And it was a requirement because the vessel is operating in very remote area and sometimes far from some support. So it, uh, it is for redundancy reason. Yes. Um, there is a, a question that is related to uh, one bar G and two bar G. So is there any capacity limitation in case of maximum two bar G and, and one bar G? I think this is for Jonathan. Uh, yeah, so um, the um, limitation is not really on the capacity of the tank uh, itself, uh, more related to uh, the, the tank height uh, because of the, the load that will have to be uh, supported by the, by the bottom of the tank, uh, especially because as you increase the the pressure in the in the gas uh, part of the tank um you you will increase also the load on the on the bottom part 
so th this is uh, mainly the the main driver for for the limitation um, and on um, on two bar G, it is uh, it translates into a limitation that is between uh, 15 to uh, 20 meters height, um, and so abo above that we, we have to reduce the, the maximum pressure, and so this is why for for container vessel, for example, or, or other type, um, or for, for large tank, we we offer more the one bar G uh, solution. Okay. Thank you. Um, there is a question, I think, for Sébastien about the holding time curve. I oh, know, sorry, it's for Jeanette, I'm sorry. How did you get the holding time curve that are displayed on the first slides? Is it operational feedback or is it calculation, simulation? Um, it, it is uh, from, our, from some simulation. Um, the, we have developed some, um, some software that are um, uh, able to to simulate any kind of um, of holding time and um, pressure increase in in one or in, in every uh, tank geometry, but we have um, validated this software through some um, experimental. Uh, yeah, we we have built one dedicated tank that was able to go up to two bar two point two bar G. Uh, and on which we 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 have tested many many cases in in order to um, yeah, to, to to make sure that the simul the simulation that we are doing are uh, representative on of the reality. Okay. Um, we do have some question that relates to uh, so alternative design. Uh, I think this is for Sebastian. The question goes like this: How long usually last the alternative design process uh, for this particular pr uh, feature of increased pressure or other topic? So, how long is the design process? Uh, alternative design process. Um, yes. Thank you for the, the, the question. Uh, so first of all, for this increased pressure um, uh, topic, uh, so if we look back for the Commandant Charcot case, uh, it took basically three years uh, from the beginning of the discussions uh, to the final approval at the delivery. Uh, of course, uh, as uh, Julien and uh, Jonathan explained during the presentation, uh, you have uh, some uh, approvals, intermediate approvals all along the, the, the process to ensure you are on the right path and also uh, de-risking the, the project. Now for this particular application, uh, the work is, uh, is done for the, the two bar gauge. Uh, the, the, the process uh, can be relatively shortened because basically uh, we, we know what kind of studies uh, to do and what to do. Uh, for the, the question related to another topic, uh, this is quite uh, difficult to, uh, to say because uh, it very much depends on the, the complexity of the project. Uh, the, how the process goes with the flag and uh, also the last key point is the collaboration with partners. Uh, my advice for, for going into alternative design is uh, that you should start uh, as early as possible and also have partners that are really committed to go through the entire process. Okay, thank you. Um, I'm trying to sort out the question. So there is a question on uh, breaking ice, ice breaking capability. So it says, how does the membrane system handle higher acceleration in case of ice breaking? Can you elaborate on the sloshing load and the PEU foam density? So maybe Sébastien? Uh, yeah, I can maybe take the, the first part and uh, let maybe Jonathan complete on the, the density of uh, PEU. Uh, what has been uh, done during the alternative design process uh, yeah, is, is to study uh, the, the impact of uh, the, the ice breaking nodes into the, the containment system uh, and at the end it was found that there was uh, no impact so the, the, the ice breaking nodes uh, had no influence on the design of the 
the, the containment system uh, because the worst case scenario is more the, the sloshing noise. And I will let maybe Jonathan to, to complete my answer if you have some additional elements. Um, no, nothing, nothing more, especially indeed we, we have studied all, all the cases and, and the, the ice breaking one uh, case one was one of them. Uh, but uh, as you said, the, the accelerations uh, when the vessel is sailing are uh, really higher than the one um, during the, the ice breaking part. So um, the accelerations inside the tank uh, are higher and then the sizing of the containment system and reinforcement of the foam uh, is uh, led by, by the stretching part. And so that's it. Okay. It's not, not the sizing uh, element. Uh, ju just, just to add, yeah, uh, you, are, you have probably noticed, but uh, we have fixed our, <laughs> our issue with the, the pole, so it is now open, and uh, we can start to, to respond to it. Um, here, there is a question that says, alternative design approval uh, shall, shall it be applied case by case, or this ship uh, bring a general approval of two barge Mark III design? Um, So is it in general or is it, so maybe I can uh, start the, the answer. So um, I would say that from a regulatory perspective, uh, this is the two challenges. Uh, one thing, it's a flag specific when it goes alternative design, uh, we have to engage discussion with a specific uh, flag. So it's not uh, for every flag. And the second challenge is uh, we need to engage early with uh, the flag administration and their experts. Um, so in answer to this question that it's not general, uh, you will have to go through the, the process uh, again. But then again, if you work with the same flag, uh, they may have already done the process. So uh, in terms of evaluation, it may be quicker, but definitely uh, it doesn't mean it's granted for any ship and any flag. So there is a question. Uh, which one? So there is a question probably for Jonathan. He said, can you advise what exactly are the maximum tank heights for 0 0.7 bar G and 2 bar G? Um, yeah, I, I think uh, I already responded partly to, to this question. Uh, 0 0.7, uh, there is no limitation. Um, because it is uh, allowed by the code. Mm -hmm. um, and um, yeah, two, two bar G, um, something between 15 to 20 meters. And this depends on, on the tank geometry, but also on, on the vessel type because uh, the vessel accelerations will be different. So, so different values for, for, for sizing the, for, for the maximum pressure. Uh, and then for, for the, for the bank height uh, allowed. Okay. Um, so there is a question that says, did an AIP had to be obtained prior going into the alternative design? And if so, how long did it took to get the AIP? Um, maybe I can start and you, you, you will complete, uh, Sebastian and Julia. If, uh, um, I, in this particular case, uh, I think we have done the two in in parallel, and, and we, we have launched all, all the studies and and um, uh, working of kind of AIP uh, also. But it, it was more included in in the alternative design uh, process and also studies that that, that came with it. Um, and this was because it was a, a first application. Uh, it is also possible to do it the other way around and to uh, do first the AIP uh, to study with, with class and maybe with flag uh, the, all those uh, specific uh, developments that need to be, uh, to be uh, applied to, to, to the design. And this obviously will uh, facilitate the, the the approval and and the, all the process during the during the project that comes uh, later, and 
especially study this uh, with the shipyard is, is uh, a good idea <laughs> in advance. Uh, and on, on the duration, uh, I think uh, maybe Sebastian uh, have uh, already um, talked about this uh, earlier. On, on this particular project, I think it was something of almost three years. Yes. Yeah, nothing particular to add to your answer, Jonathan. Okay. Um, so we have a couple of more questions. Uh, there is a question on cost. Uh, what is the additional cost for a design featuring a tank with increased maximum pressure? Additional cost. Hmm. Um, uh, I will take this one as well. Uh, the, the, um, there is three main parts uh, when all three, yeah. Uh, this has an impact on three, three main uh, parts for, for the additional cost. Um, more engineering time, but this, uh, as we said before, like it can be done in, in advance. And now that we have developed um, most of the technological uh, bricks, this should be uh, shorter. Uh, one part on the alternative design process, discussion with class uh, and flag especially, uh, which takes some time. This is kind of limited, and the yeah. So the, the last one is maybe the, the biggest one on, on the um, increased uh, L, um, L design and, and the scanning that need to be improved, uh, and also on the reinforcement. D difficult to say really a, a cost because it is the yard that, that is providing the cost. W what we have uh, done on, uh, for example, the one bar gauge um, design, and what we have studied in, in GTT for a uh, 15,000 uh, TEU container vessel, uh, 14,000 cubics of uh, LNG, we have estimated 50 to 100 uh, additional tons of steel for earth counting or additional earth counting. Um, and also reinforcement in the area of the dome, uh, about uh, 12 ton of uh, stainless steel. So all in all, quite a limited uh, um, yeah, additional weight at least to and cost can be translated. Okay. Uh, there is a question about uh, scaffolding. Is there any problem for scaffolding in the aft LNG fuel tank? I think it's because of the uh, slanted uh, uh, surface. LNG tank bottom shape seems that is, is not easy for the membrane work. Sebastian, maybe? Yeah, um, actually, uh, what, what difficult is to, to access to the interior of the tank and because as you can picture the, the space is uh, is very tight uh, for the dome so you need also uh, uh, ropes uh, to access uh, in, into the tanks first uh, for the scaffolding itself uh, it was not uh, was not really the, the the challenge the challenge is more to to access to the uh, interior of the tanks because uh, as this is a cruise ship application uh, the space is very uh, constrained, uh, but it is uh, manageable. Okay. Ah. Uh, okay, so what question do we have? Do we have a question for LNG carrier? Could this increased pressure to two bar G be applied for LNG carrier? So it's maybe for Jonathan. Um, yeah. So this um, um, there is no reasons why we could not apply it to LNG carriers, but um, practically there should be no need for such increased pressure because the IGC code is already allowing the pressure to be up to uh, 0 0.7 bar G. And all, all the LNG carriers are uh, at uh, 0.25. Uh, 
so re really lower uh, design pressure compared to, to the maximum that can be uh, used and it, it is not something that is uh, useful for for lmg carriers because they, they are sailing uh, yeah mostly all the time um, and but this uh, increased pressure um, is also some uh, applied for fsru but remaining in the what the ITC code is uh, allowing. So, so sometimes 0.4, for example, uh, barge, and, and this is uh, sufficient. Um, and we showed that it was uh, sufficient operationally. Okay. Um, I, I see that we have a question regarding the presentation. Uh, yeah, we, we, we can uh, we, we can redistribute uh, the presentation, of course. I think cost, there is a question on cost, but this has been already covered. Uh, uh, we have talked about that cost. Uh, I see that there is one uh, about the nitrogen plant. Mm -hmm. um, uh, yeah, uh, is the system uh, involving nitrogen plant for the barriers uh, as well? Um, yeah, we, we, we do not change anything um, for, for the Mark III system uh, on this. Uh, so the, rim, the principle remains the same and, and we still have some nitrogen uh, flowing in, in the both um, insulation system, uh, yeah, uh, between inter-barrier space. So yeah, this is a uh, same principle. Okay. Uh, we have a question. Uh, we have a question related to hydrogen. <laughs> uh, it's probably for GTT. Do you think it is possible in the future to use a pure hydrogen or a mixture uh, with hydrogen? Uh, mm -hmm. Is there any R&D regarding this? So it's a bit uh, off topic, but <laughs> Nathan, do you feel OK? Or... Um, I can try to oh, at least st start the answer and uh, maybe you you can complete as well um as such um i am not aware of uh, any uh, hydrogen directly used as as a fuel but there is some um uh, so some r d yeah regarding the use of a fuel cell for example uh, so that could be uh, involving some uh, hydrogen, but more, uh, for example, using uh, ammonia and then uh, cracking it to, to have hydrogen and, and um, using some some fuel cell for for the for the vessel. This is what I know of this subject, but maybe you you can complete my answer. Uh, yeah, I mean, hydrogen is a topic in itself, so it's not today, but I mean, uh, as a class, we are involved in, I mean, uh, and the industry is working on hydrogen uh, as a fuel, uh, hydrogen storage, a uh, lot of various ways to store hydrogen. So I think it goes beyond <laughs> the topic today, but uh, in liquid form, compressed form, uh, in metal, polymer, uh, and uh, uh, LOHC, so uh, various form of storage. Um, as a class, we are working in, uh, with various suppliers uh, on uh, this uh, various type of storage. So either to be used uh, in a fuel cell, as Jonathan said, or used directly in an engine. So directly in an engine is a uh, technical readiness level is uh, quite low. Uh, so it's starting and as a fuel cell, the maturity is uh, much higher. So uh, there is, I mean, a decent number right now of projects that are using a fuel cell on board, mostly as a demonstrator. And we feel, I mean, in the future, the fuel cell technology will uh, improve in terms of uh, density, uh, lifetime, 
uh, efficiency. So uh, I mean, definitely there is a I mean the future uh, with the fuel I mean hydrogen fuel cell internal combustion engine. Yeah. Um, there is another question. I mean, it's not technical; it's uh, administrative. Is how do I request a copy of the technical paper? So, Jonathan, this uh, anyone can send uh, an email to directly to the email uh, of the uh, yeah. of the registration. Yeah, this this will work. Or this or to uh, commercial at uh, gtt uh, dot fr fr. Okay. Yeah. Okay. Um, Uh, there is a question for two barge application. What type of cargo safety valve is uh, used? Is it spring loaded or pilot type? Um, so pilot type, uh, pilot type uh, safety valve. So pilot type, okay. This is standard, uh, standard safety valve that exists also on type C applications. Okay. Um, so I think we have reached the other uh, Q&A. Uh, maybe we can do the poll uh, analysis. Yeah. So um, yeah, ju just to complete, uh, we, we had uh, quite a lot of questions. So we, we, are, we are not able to, to answer all of them. Um, we, we will also reach out to those um, where we, we did, not, did not have enough time to, to answer. So we, we will provide an answer uh, after the webinar. Um, so I will now display the results uh, of the of the poll. So you, you should be uh, seeing this uh, right now. So uh, first question was um, yeah, regarding the type of vessel uh, for the for the increased pressure of one bar G uh, being the most relevant, uh, knowing that for PCTC, so car carriers and cruise ships, uh, we consider that it is already at two bar G because um, the tank size are very limited and those type of vessels are requiring more, um, more flexibility. So between container vessel, bulk uh, tankers and LBVs, and we have a perfect tight, uh, <laughs> Um, container vessel and uh, LNG bunker vessel are uh, winning this uh, <laughs> this this one um, by uh, yeah for forty two percent each so quite uh, quite a large <laughs> victory uh, quite quite interesting to see that um, yeah container vessel and LBVs are, are on the same level um, so yeah for, for LNG bunker vessel it is um, quite logical, I would say, because uh, it is the type of vessels that are uh, doing some uh, some idle time. So uh, it could, could be useful to, to have uh, also the possibility to uh, let sometimes the pressure rise. Uh, even if uh, usually those um, LBVs are equipped with some um, fuel gas or cargo content, cargo handling system that allowed them to uh, under the pressure in uh, another way. So there is also some alternatives for this. Um, and, and yeah, second one, container vessel. So it, it is uh, also our, our opinion that it is maybe the main uh, interest for, for, for the main area of interest for, for this increased pressure. And, uh, after bulk and uh, less, uh, yeah, the ones that have the, the least answers is uh, tankers. Okay, thank you for this uh, answers. Interesting. Um, so maybe Sebastian, you want to take the second one? Yeah, uh, so the, the second question was, uh, according to you, what was the, the main advantage of uh, the increased pressure for LNG fuel ship. Uh, so here we have uh, one clear uh, winner in the answer with 74% uh, of the answers, uh, which is the increased holding time, uh, hence reducing the risk of bent venting and wasting oil of gas. 
And the second position, uh, the easier and faster uh, operation, so bunkering, uh, commissioning. <clears throat> so, uh, and, and number three, uh, with 5%, the additional peace of mind for the operator. Uh, the maybe a comment on, on this. Uh, it's very interesting to, to see uh, that the, the, the first one is about uh, safety, actually. And yeah, it is right that uh, this two burgers design is bringing a certain advantage in terms of uh, uh, holding time increase. Uh, as Jonathan explained in the presentation, uh, you can nearly double. Uh, the holding time. So this is uh, clearly an advantage in terms of, uh, of safety. Uh, I would like to also to, to comment uh, that there is another aspect uh, on day-to-day -day operation uh, for, for our particular application as well, because in, in our case, uh, we, we have a relatively long supply chain and we can be bunkered uh, by various types of, uh, types of vessel that can be equipped uh, differently uh, to manage a ball of gas. So the, the design is also bringing uh, some flexibility in that perspective. And um, one last point um, that is really not uh, measurable as such, but uh, in my opinion, very important, uh, especially for newcomers in the, the LNG business uh, that have uh, really little experience of this, of this fuel. Uh, so this is the fact that uh, with this design, uh, you have uh, really more time to, to react when the tanks are experiencing uh, pressure variations uh, due to vessel movement, for example. And uh, this uh, kind of solution uh, also bring uh, a real peace of mind for the operators. Uh, so this is uh, about our, our, uh, operational feedback. Uh, but uh, thank you for your, uh, your answers on, uh, and your feedback on on this question. And now we let me yeah, take uh, question number three. And so question number three was, uh, which fuel do you consider the most relevant on your decarbonization path in the next decade for deep sea shipping? So number one, you said is uh, gas, LNG, whether it's LNG, bio LNG, E LNG. Uh, number two is uh, bio and E methanol. And number three is uh, ammonia. Uh, just to let you know, we have had two sessions of the same webinar. One was more uh, centered on Asia and Europe, and this one is more centered on Europe and USA, and we had the same uh, order. So number one is LNG, number two is uh, methanol, and number three is ammonia. Uh, and uh, number first by a, a, a big margin, I would say, uh, 63%. So we just say that uh, as an industry, uh, LNG is still considered a viable option for at least in the near future, uh, which is a good point <laughs> that goes in the same direction as what we are uh, trying to, to say uh, in today's seminar. Uh, yeah. And, and maybe interesting to see also that uh, methanol is gaining more interest comparing to ammonia probably six months ago or one year ago it would have been the, the opposite okay uh, very well um, i think we will um, stop here for for the poll and for for this session of uh, of our webinar so uh, yeah we we have come to an end for for presentation we hope that we found you found it uh, interesting Many thanks for attending, uh, many thanks also to Sebastian uh, and Julia for presenting me, with me today. So wishing you a good day, uh, good evening, depending on where you are, and um, see you next time. Thanks, bye. Thank you, bye. Thank you.